Happy Sunday, everybody. I know I don't normally, I normally do a, a daily show of sorts Monday through Friday, but I'd missed or I'd, I'd done Thursday, but it was a, a, a poor quality video mixed with there's something really important going on with the Brianna Taylor protest coinciding with SB211. And there's a lot of conversations going on online about it. And, and I felt a need to just kind of discuss this issue coming from our side thing. And by our, I mean like, with with what is the viewpoint what what is if, if you're for liberty if you're for um those types of things what do i think the viewpoint is and 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 to to a degree i'm gonna lose some of you here maybe you may disagree with me and that's okay we can disagree that's all right but it, i do try to remain consistent in my views and my values as much as i can okay and and what i mean by that is is sometimes it means things are a little difficult. So first, I think at first, maybe we should talk about what 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 I think, slash if, if you're for liberty, maybe what you look at, or at least what I look at the Breonna Taylor situation as. And I look at it as a, a unfortunate situation that was, I, I don't think it was Breonna Taylor's fault, but I also don't think it was the officers on the ground's fault. Now, my this is my curse cursory kind of overview of the situation but essentially we have a a police policy that is in my opinion asking for trouble in no knock warrants and what i mean by that is is i'm an i'm a i'm a huge defender of the second amendment i believe hugely in the second amendment i believe the citizens have a right to bear arms and when you have a right to bear arms that means that um you you have a right to protect yourself well no knock warrant done in the middle of the night is naturally eventually going to lead to a situation like we had with Breonna Taylor. It just is. It's a bad policy. It's a really bad policing policy that is, is I understand to a degree why it was put in place, but at the same time, we have to take a step back and realize what kind of trouble we're asking for. Because if you break in, not break in, but because they're police, right? But if you get a no-knock warrant and you bust down my door at 2 a.m. And, and, and I'm just waking up and I'm groggy, and because I'm, I'm an adamant Second Amendment person, I am going to draw my gun and start firing too. I just am. And if I was a police officer who uh, was following up on a policy I was given that we have had in place for a while that is, is pretty normal and commonplace, and I'm doing that, and I bust down a door and I start getting shot at, I'm going to shoot back as well. And I think when we look at that situation and the nuance of that situation and to sit there and say, one, it's, it's a racial shooting, I think is, is an incorrect moment. I think it is a bad policy where people uh, and, and where, where government is once again not respecting individuals' rights. And what I mean by that is respecting their Second Amendment right and not understanding that if we come in unannounced in the middle of the night, we might get shot at and to respect that. They need to respect that idea because they, I can lawfully, until proven guilty or until proven uh, um, to be a, a, a criminal, uh, I can lawfully bear arms. And so if you respect my Second Amendment right as policing, as government, you don't bust into my house unannounced in the middle of the night because you may get shot. And at the same time, I don't blame the officers from what I've seen. I can't blame them. And I can't blame them because it's a policy that they've followed for a long time that they were handed down and that hasn't had issue before. And, and I, I don't mean to say following orders in the sense that there's a line of, you know, following orders. And, and we'll talk about that here in a second. But there, there, there's a degree of this is just a policy that's in place. We're executing a warrant like we're supposed to. That's what we were doing. And, I, you know, I, I don't blame them for doing that either. I think it is an institutional issue with no-knock warrants. I don't think it has anything to do with racism. I think uh, uh, turning it into a it, – much like um, how I view uh, years ago when we had the gay, uh, gay rights, gay marriage issue, I view it as a missed opportunity by us liberty people – to, to recognize what it is. And for an example, taking the gay rights issue, it should have been an opportunity to say, government needs to get out of marriage. I shouldn't have to get a license to get married, period. That should have been what we liberty folk use that opportunity for. You don't need to endorse, uh, in that case, gay marriage in order to say government shouldn't be involved in marriage. And that should have been our conversation. Fast forward to now, 
This should be not a conversation about racial issues, but instead a conversation about a government that systematically does not respect the rights of the individuals. That's what it should be. And so that's the Breonna Taylor shooting. But now we have these not-so-peaceful protests and in response to that, SB 211. And of course, because, you know, they don't bother to look at the bigger picture with these, these, these protesters, um, at the same time SB 211 is passed, they then go out and execute the kind of behavior that SB 211 is attempting to look at. And so looking at SB 211, what is it? It's a bill. Uh, we refer to it around here as the no cussy a copy bill. Um, quite frankly, it is a bill that, that is not necessary, and I'll tell you why. What it's attempting to do is address the protesters, and, and not protesters, but attempting to address the out-of-control behavior of the not-so-peaceful protesting and to address the property damage issues that these protesters create and have created all around the country. And it's trying to address that through legislation, but what it shows is a lack of understanding of what the issue is. I'll tell you what the issue is. The issue is not that we need more laws. The issue is not we need to make no swearing at officers a law. Quite frankly, it's already been proven to be unconstitutional. And in fact, to know it's been proven to be unconstitutional and to be a lawmaker that then makes a law that is unconstitutional, you are now admitting that you don't care about the Constitution. It's hard, right? What separates us from them? What separates us from them? What separates who we are from the GOP establishment, the Democrats, the socialists, the communists? What separates us? And to me, what separates me is my respect for the Constitution and my respect for what it stands for. And that means sometimes, as the old adage go, I may not agree with what you say, but I'll fight like heck to protect your right to say it. In the same way that it shouldn't be illegal to swear at officers just because they're officers, it shouldn't be illegal to sell a Confederate flag in New York. It's First Amendment issues, right? I may not agree with this speech, but you should. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't have the right to say it. The Second Amendment is not needed for discussion. Uh, as, as I believe Ron Paul says, the Second Amendment, is, or sorry, the First Amendment is not needed for discussion about the weather. The First Amendment exists to protect speech that people don't like. That's why it exists. And, and what's, what we, we can talk about here in a second how to deal with officers being treated correctly. But SB 211 doesn't need to exist. It just doesn't. Because it's trying to solve an issue through legislation that's being created through, through not just societal issues, and that's on us, but also through uh, policing issues and also the the judicial issues so as you but as you watch those videos and everything from last night and you see them swearing at officers getting real upset and understand too sp211 is not wrote like if i get in somebody's face out of nowhere and start swearing them that's now illegal no the way sp211 is worded it would make flipping off an officer from 100 feet away illegal and i'm sorry but that shouldn't be illegal we have to ask ourselves at the end of every law is a gun Right? And this is the way we need to start thinking about laws. And what I mean by that is, is it, at the end of every law is a gun, no matter how minor the law, speeding, for an example. You get pulled over for speeding, I write you a ticket. You don't pay that ticket, I take away your license. You keep driving anyways, I say, oh, you're, you're getting ticketed for driving without a license. I keep driving anyways, I'm going to get arrested. If I refuse to be arrested at that point, there's now a gun saying you are going to jail for this. So at the end of every law is a gun, and that is a basic concept you have to understand. So you have to ask yourself this question. Do I really want a law to exist that at the end of it's a gun that says you can't say the F word to an officer? You can't flip off an officer from 100 feet away. Holding a protest sign outside of a police station means that a gun needs to be pulled on you. We, we have to remember that. We have to think about that as we're doing it. And it's hard, and I get it, because sometimes you disagree so evidently with what they're doing. And tell me, and, and, and I promise you this much, these people that take a blowhorn and get an inch away from the officer's face and are yelling at them are pieces of garbage. They're terrible people. They're terrible, terrible people. And, and, and I, I, it pains me to have to protect the rights of individuals that I so adamantly disagree with and I think are such terrible individuals. However, however, 
I cannot say I am for the Constitution and I respect it and I'll fight for it and I'll hold anybody accountable that goes against it and then give up my my personal beliefs and views just because it's easier for me to give it up than it is to stand by them. And and remember that. It is easier to say what's passed a law to say you can't swear at officers because I don't like it and I don't than it is to say we need to go about this through the way that is legal and we can. It is difficult and it is hard, but that is what separates us. SB 211 is the line where it separates you from being just like them because if the ends justify them, I'm sorry, if the ends justify the means, you'll never hit the ends and you'll just be doing the means the whole time. And that is the same thought process they use to trample all over our constitution and we have to draw a line and say we don't do the same thing. Yes, we're willing to fight dirty in the sense that we're willing to go down into the dirt. We're willing to make memes. We're willing to call you out. We're willing to say things that are sometimes crazy. We're willing to take you to court. We're willing to fight you. We're willing to stand up to you. We're willing to get confrontational. We're willing to get in your faces and tell you, you can't do that. But at the end of the day, what separates us is the fact that we don't cross that line. The Constitution exists, and it's only as powerful as we are who are willing to stand by and protect it. So how do I solve this, right? So you say, well, Andrew... You're saying I can't make legislation. What do I do? First thing we need to understand is we have to enforce the laws that are currently on the books to deal with these situations. I'll give you an example from Fox News. Breonna Taylor, armed protesters prompt Louisville police to declare unlawful assembly. A protest in Louisville, Kentucky on Saturday night, one year anniversary of Breonna Taylor's declared unlawful assembly according to police. Some protesters, while armed, this is key here, blocked vehicular traffic and forced motorists to turn around. Arrests will be made to those who refuse to disperse. Perfect. That's fine. You start blocking the roadway. You start making it to where my freedom of travel is infringed upon. That's a correct response by the police. But here's where it gets bad. No race arrests were made by 11 p.m. A woman who was seen in handcuffs by a police was later released. To expand upon that, we have in Portland, 31 of 90 people arrested for property damage for damaging for these not-so-peaceful protests released. No prosecution. The problem isn't more legislation. The first problem we have is we're not enforcing the law on those we are arresting. We need to hold them accountable for the laws they break. They break a window, they go to jail. They infringe upon another person's rights, they go to jail. That's the first thing we need to do. We don't need more laws on the books if we're not enforcing the ones we currently have. That's not the answer. So the first thing is we need to properly enforce it. We need to have judicial people in place. We need to make sure our judges are being held accountable, our prosecutors are being held accountable to protect the rights of the individuals. And as the individuals being infringed upon by this group of unruly people, it's okay to protest things you believe in. And I'll protect your right to do it, as I said earlier. It is not okay to start to destroying other people's stuff and to block roadways and to create an environment that makes it to where it's unsafe for other individuals. You know, we've all seen that liquor store. Well, at least I've, I've, you know, we've seen stories of liquor store owner who for months on end had to sleep in his own liquor store in Louisville to make sure it was protected. Right? We've all seen issues like Kyle Rittenhouse situation, which I don't want to go super down that road right now because we're talking about Brown and Taylor. But I, I will say right off the bat, I support Kyle Rittenhouse. From what I know about the story, from what I've seen, he was in the right. I support that. Hate me if you want to. We can talk about that later. But you have a right to bear arms. You have a right to protect your property. He worked at that uh, um, dealership or had. The owner of the dealership had asked him to come out there and protect it. That's what a malicious kind of for when the police are failing. But put that to the side. We wouldn't need this if the, the police that are on the scene would arrest. And I know it's hard and I know it's difficult and I hear you, cops. I hear you. And more importantly, if the prosecutors and the judicial system did their job of holding these people accountable and not just releasing them. That's the problem. That's the law in the books. We already had laws on the books to deal with these situations. That's the first thing. The second thing is it needs to fall on us. For as much as you're crying out and arguing with people about SB 211 saying it needs to be on the books, stop asking the government to solve your problems. If you don't like the way officers are being treated, fight back. 
And what I mean by that is, is where is the line of people linked in arms to protect the officers? We've seen this in Portland where there's a line of people protecting the protesters from the officers. But we have not seen a line of people protecting the cops. You talk such a big game about wanting to help the police and protect them. Where's your line of people creating a barrier between the police and them where if they want to yell at the cops, they have to get past you? Where is that buffer zone? You care so much about the police. Why are you not out there protecting them peacefully? Mind you, not with arms. You don't need that. They're not armed. But in the same way they're using their words to attack these officers, where are you using your words and your bodies to protect those officers? You care so much about them, get off your butt and go protect them. Stop asking legislators to pass laws that infringe upon people's First Amendment rights and start stepping up in your community and creating a culture that says, don't do it in the first place. We didn't need a law to say you don't swear at officers for people to treat officers properly over the past several decades. No, we had a culture that said you treat officers properly. That culture needs to come back. It is on you, it is on me, it's on all of us that we think it's acceptable to treat officers that way. I hear people saying, Andrew, these officers are going to be quitting, though, if we don't pass these laws. I've heard that argument. No, these officers will be quitting because you're not supporting them. Listen, it is a job to them, but it's also a calling of sorts. Right? It's something they believe in. You know, there's a lot of jobs out there that pay better. Officers aren't necessarily joining it just because they want to make money. They're joining it because they, they want to help people. They think they're going to help people. And, I, and I'm sure, as we can dig into policing and the issues with it, I'm sure most officers don't join the force to write speeding tickets all day long and to arrest people for, for necessarily, I don't know, victimless crimes. They join it to help people. They join it. They want to solve crimes. They want to help individuals. And we need to support them in those efforts. And we don't do it by passing laws. We do it by saying, I'm here to stand with you side by side. You guys care so much about protecting officers. I do too as well. So I'm just as guilty. Where's our protest for police? Why aren't we protesting at the courthouses, the judiciary, the prosecutor saying, protect our cops? When somebody breaks the law and they're arrested, prosecute them. Hold them accountable. Where is that? The biggest deterrent to crime, the biggest deterrent to this behavior is if you have consequences for when you do something that is illegal and wrong. And right now, they don't feel they have consequences. Ask yourself, how do we get to a culture that feels so comfortable to yell in a blowhorn of a police officer's face, right? They're out there protesting police brutality and police racism and everything else, yet they feel comfortable enough to get in the face of an officer and yell at them. I say the two don't really match up. It doesn't really make sense. But how do we get to a place where that's acceptable? It's because we've laid down and allowed it to happen. We've not bothered to fight in this culture war. So... Protect the First Amendment. We don't need legislation. You should be against SB 211, at least the line that states that gestures and rude language is illegal. It's an infringement of First Amendment rights. It just is. And yes, once again, it's easy -er to ignore the Constitution sometimes, but that's what separates us. Understand the Breonna Taylor situation. Use it as an opportunity to ask the government to respect our personal and civil rights better, to not infringe upon them, and to not assume they can infringe upon them, as I covered earlier with the Second Amendment discussion. Protest, off, uh, protest uh, uh, prosecutors and judges. They don't hold these not-so-peaceful protesters accountable when they're not so peaceful. And if you're super worried about it, go out there, and create your own counter protests that protect the officers. That's the answers. That's the solutions. We don't need to trample on our Constitution to achieve an end. We just need to step up and be a part of the solution. Thank you guys for joining me. Feel free to share this out. I'll put this up on the uh, podcast. Like I said, special episode, so I didn't do the whole preamble, but just share it out. Share it with people. I think this is an important message people need to understand. Because we have to separate ourselves by them by saying we will stand for what we believe in even when it's not easy. Thanks, guys.